I'm a guitar addict. There's something about a Gibson SG that draws me to them like a magpie and I have to have them. I love SG specials. Pete Townsend, didn't it? This is called Old Stinky. Well, look, it's a beautiful thing, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> look what we've got here. It's like a toy case, this, isn't it? It's a bit worse for wear, this. Let me get the guitar out and uh, show you what it is, and then we'll get rid of this before it disintegrates. This, my holy grail. Hello, good to see you. Welcome to the Guitaristas. So this week you join us as we carry on with a, with a look at my guitar collection. Um, this is part two of the SGs. SGs, as you might, might know, my favourite guitar. Uh, I seem to have acquired more SGs than anything else, so I suppose that does tell us something. Why? Why do I like SGs so much? I think it goes back to 1979 when I got my first Gibson, and it was an SG. And some of the, some of the players that I was... A fan of at that time. Frank Zappa was, I think, a big influence, and at that time he always played SGs. I would say, you know, I would say Angus Young, like everyone says Angus Young, don't, don't they? But, you know, obviously I was aware of Angus. I think he made them look really cool. Something about, something about the devil horns and Angus, wasn't it? Uh, anyway, I don't know, it was just, Les Paul's never really appealed to me. I did have a uh, a lawsuit copy before I bought my first SG. I had an Aria Pro 2. Um, I think it was about 1978. So that would have been a full-on lawsuit Aria, which was, was great. I remember it being very heavy. And I remember selling a motorbike. I used to have, a, I got banned from riding my motorbike in um, 1979 for speeding. Uh, and uh, so I sold it and bought an SG. <laughs> so when I got back into playing again, it was, you know, it was only about, I started buying guitars again in 2007, I think it was, and then got heavily into playing again, 2013, and buying again. And I bought an SGJ, a Gibson SGJ, 2013. And I thought, yeah, it is, SG's my thing. So then this was the next one I bought. I bought this in 2016, and it's a, it's a Gibson SG standard. You know, the SGJ was a cheap one. This was the SG standard. It was the daddy. It's a proper one, isn't it? Look, it's in proper heritage cherry. But it's got P90s, this one. You might have noticed that by now. It's got P90s because I love P90s. I mean, there's not really much of a story to this one, which is why I, I prefaced it with all of that. Um, I'm trying to think, what can I say about this guitar? Well, I was gassing for an SG, and uh, I went to PMT in Southend. This was on the wall. It was £899. It had P90s, an SG with P90s. I was gigging at the time as well. I'd just kind of got my band together, so I was looking for a guitar to gig with. And this really called to me. It called to me. Here I am. So I bought it. And look, as you can see, I've played it. As you can also see, probably by these pictures, I never clean my guitars. It's it's been well played this one, and I'm 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 always very pleased <laughs> to see the the obvious signs of use on guitars that I've bought. I don't like having guitars that I don't use. Um, at least, you know, every now and then. So this one's definitely um, earned its keep, if you like, and bought way before the channel existed. So um, 
it's brilliant to be able to show it to you guys and now i'm going to have a little play and we'll see what it sounds like because this is one of my favorite <laughs> i'm going to say this a lot and i this is one of my favorite sgs yeah it's one of my favorites this is what it sounds like <laughs> Next up, I wanted to show you this. It's, um, well, it's an Epiphone SG special, isn't it? And I want to show you this because although it's an affordable guitar, this was, I can't remember, but it was 300 and something pounds. It's a proper, you could almost call it cheap, couldn't you? It's a proper affordable guitar. And it's, it's, it, it just totally deserves to be shown off. And, and, and I'm so, I'm so proud of this. I really like this guitar and I play it a lot. At times, I play it as much as any of my other SGs, um, which I suppose is testament to its playability. Yeah, you know, the neck's not my favourite, but I ignore that largely. I love the look of it. You've seen it on the back wall. It's a, it's a bloody sexy SG, isn't it? Look at it. So I, I wanted to include this Epiphone in, in my collection. You'll see a lot of Epiphones in my collection that are like this. I've, I've bought them and I thought, well, I'm keeping that because it's good, you know. It's, re it's just a good guitar in every respect. There's nothing, you know, there's, there's, and it's all totally standard. I'm, I had a, a comment actually in the comments, funnily enough. Um, somebody was saying they... They just ordered one of these, and 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 they were saying, should I change the pickups for for Gibson P90s? And I just um, I just said, well, no, I don't know why would you need to. You know, these are these are great. There's nothing wrong with this guitar. It sounds great. But as I was just well now, literally as I'm filming this, I'm just thinking, well, there's a funny thing because I want to show you something else. Now this is the Gibson SG Special that I bought. Not very long ago, and if you saw you saw the film I made about that, you'll know where this is going. Funnily enough, when I bought and reviewed this, I didn't like the pickups, so <laughs> I took the Gibson P90s out of this, and I've replaced these with uh, some custom wound. I think these were Murray's P90s, weren't they? And it it it, it fixed it. <laughs> it fixed the guitar. So yeah, in answer to that question, the Epiphone was great out of the box with the Epiphone P90 Pros. You don't need to put Gibson pickups in 
<laughs> in an Epiphone. But if you buy Gibson, you might have to change the pickups. So that leads us seamlessly on, I suppose, to <laughs> another SG in my collection, the Gibson SG Special. Which is, uh, I mean, I've changed it a little bit. So I changed the pickups and I changed all the wiring and I put a torque pit guard on it. And through that process, uh, I added a little hole in the back where I put a screw through it. You need to check that film out to, to see how on earth that happened. Um, this was um, one of my most recent SGs. Not the most recent. There's another one coming that I've bought since this. But um, yeah, I wanted, um, I wanted a whole range of SG specials. I love SG specials. Pete Townsend, didn't it? You know, what can you say? So I'd got the affordable Epiphone. I'd got the not quite as affordable Gibson so that I could do the, the full-on comparison with this one. It is, of course, the Gibson custom shop version of the SG Special. <laughs> and this one is, uh, you, may, you may recall, this is called Old Stinky. <laughs> this is, uh, or Stinky. I don't know if it's Old, old Stinky. It's Old Stinky now, isn't it? Uh, it's not that old. It's 2007. So Gibson Custom Shop. 2007 when, was when they actually first started calling themselves Gibson Custom Shop. Prior to that, it was Gibson Custom Art and Historic for the reissues, you know, which are, which are historic reissues. So this is a historic reissue of a 64, I'm going to say 64 SG Special. I think I'm right in saying 64, it might be 63. Anyway, they all kind of merges into one. Um, and why is it called Stinky, I hear you ask? Um, well, only because when I got it, it stunk. <laughs> I, um, I bought this used. I bought this from the Guitar Amp and Keyboard Centre in Brighton as a used bargain. I'd been looking for one. I decided this was the first SG Special that I bought. Um, SG Special being Twin P90 wrap over bridge, if you didn't know that. I know there are cheaper versions of Gibson SGs that they called specials, but this is a proper, that's, that's an SG special, okay? Proper, yeah, proper. I've been looking for an SG special. Um, the Pete Townsend thing had got me, and I'm thinking an SG special. So I've been looking, and I found this one used at GAC in Brighton, and, and it was a nice price, so I bought it. Well, a nice price for a Gibson Custom Shop guitar. I mean, none of them are nice prices, are they? It was fucking expensive, but not as expensive as you might imagine. So I bought it. And when I got it, you know, they hadn't misrepresented it. It was a used guitar, and they'd said so. They didn't say it stinks of fags, though. It, it wasn't something that had, had happened overnight. It, was, it obviously belonged to a heavy smoker. And it's and it, gone now. Took a long while, though. But um, there you go. So that's stinky, and it's an SG special, and it's it's really loud. <laughs> it's really boisterous. This guitar. It's yeah. Let's have a listen. <laughs>
mean, look what we've got here. Uh, look, it's one of these old... It's like a toy case, this, isn't it? What they call them? Crocodile cases or alligator cases? Anyway, yeah, this next one came in this. Oh, blimey. Um, I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to do it up so you get a proper idea of what we're dealing with here. Uh, it's is an original case that they used to supply with these guitars. Um, it's a bit worse for wear this. Let me get the guitar out and uh, show you what it is and then we'll get rid of this before it disintegrates. There you go. <laughs> it's my 62 Les Paul Jr. Les Paul, see, on the headstock. Let's get rid of the case. Here it is. So this be my pride and joy. <laughs> I suppose my number one guitar. Um, not just because uh, it's, well, it's my oldest, well, I'm going to call it an SG, but it's Les Paul because it's 1962. So this was before they called this the SG. You, you know the story. In 1961, they reinvented the Les Paul in this shape. And they called it the SG for two, three years before I think Les Paul asked them to take the name off. So they, they then called it the SG. Um, and this, yeah, this is an original 62. And that was the case that it came in. I bought this privately and I remember the guy saying, when, when I carried it away in the case, he said, don't trust the case. You don't want to drop it on the driveway. So, but it's... um. Well, look, it's a beautiful thing, if you like that sort of thing. You can see it's got proper age checking on it. I've used this guitar a lot. I used this to gig with prior to um, the pandemic when I was gigging with my band. I used this. Um, well, look, you can see, you can see again, you can see how faded it is by the back versus the front. So quite faded and not as much as the um, the one that I showed you last week the standard was last week wasn't it yeah but it's uh, it's a great thing it's, it's it's genuine it's original it's as far as I can tell 100% original um, you can see this is like the original um, tail bridge and how how it has to be screwed all the way back so it literally looks like it might be even be hanging off to intonate but this intonates well perfectly as far as i can tell i've never had any problems with it at all i don't have any tuning problems with it it sounds i'll play it in a minute and you can hear it there's something about this guitar when i went to buy it i mean it's really light it's well, what say? this so 62 this is going to be this proper old growth mahogany, it's going to be Brazilian rosewood, isn't it? This has got the original tuners on it. They're a little bit, you know, but not it, not so much as I needed to change them. As I said, I gigged with it, so it's fine. It's just a little bit tight sometimes, but they're fine and they hold tune. It's got a slightly warped pit guard as you can see it's all original stuff this here came with it in the case this is what they called yeah that was originally in there it was an alternative that they briefly made to the maestro wiggle stick this was called a tremor tone i believe the lever i hadn't got the lever with it but this is what was originally on the guitar there which has left that kind of horseshoe mark I shan't be putting it back on, but it's nice to have that part. They were quite rare with that, I believe. But there you go. Possibly, well, when I bought it, the, the, the seller said it had almost certainly had a refret because the frets are in pretty good nick. So apart from that, all the wiring inside looks 100% original. And there's no brakes. 
and it's really light <laughs> and it's it's lovely and um i bought it at a time when they were still you know fairly reasonable and these are still fairly reasonable for vintage guitars now you might be able to pick one up for about 5k um i paid i think it was half of that for this not very long ago you know maybe four or five years ago i'm gonna say five probably five um but anyway if you're thinking these are investments guitars you know people go on about how gibsons are investments you know les paul standards new les paul standards are not good investments unless you want to hang on to them for a very long time if you want an investment guitar buy something like this because in many cases it's still cheaper than a custom shop version okay and it will definitely be worth more money in just a few years if you buy stuff like this of course that doesn't always apply to vintage guitars and i'll i'll talk more about that in in forthcoming episodes when i show you some other stuff that i've got in the back room there but this yeah this my holy grail this is what it sounds like The last SG I have to show you, my latest SG shaped acquisition, this one, the pink one, remember? A fairly recent uh, purchase, this one, current model, SG standard, but limited edition. Limited edition because of the color, <laughs> you know, the, the, the color scheme and uh, the small block inlays and the pickups, which are um, Gibson T types, which are uh, uh, a replication, that's a good, decent enough word, of the original 70s Gibson T tops, T top humbuckers. There's a film review about this, links in the description box, check it out. I bought this um, 
as you know, it was an Andertons and CM, CME in the States exclusive. They did this in a number of colours. Shell pink, this one. They did it. They do it in an, another sort of a, a rose. I don't know what they call, they call it. It's a kind of another a pinkish hue to it. They do it in an olive green. I want one of those. They do it in a yellow. I want one of those. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my eyes open because it was actually... I was able to admit when I got this, wasn't I, a little, little while back, that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a guitar addict, and I buy these things often purely on how I like the look. And there's something about a Gibson SG that, that, that draws me to them like a magpie, and I have to have them, and I had to have this. I was absolutely delighted at how good this sound, this guitar is is great it's really great and i'm i'm really pleased that i've had a chance to to bring it out again to include it in a film and i'm going to go and have a little play now and show you and then um i'll probably go home <laughs> i don't know but i will be back next week with someone else so thank you very much for for uh, for joining us the last two weeks that that's the sgs guys i'm sure there'll be more <laughs> added to the collection soon sg wise but that's not the end of the collection is it i've got plenty of other stuff so we'll be back um we'll continue the collection in a in a couple of weeks i think we'll we'll do something else next week probably keep it keep it interesting you know if you don't like sgs don't worry next week something else will be along that you might like who knows Maybe an affordable guitar to review. Maybe a budget guitar to review. Maybe a mid-priced or expensive guitar to review. Who knows? Well, I certainly don't because I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. So come back next week, same time, same place, and let's find out. <laughs> Thanks again. Cheers for now. Ta-da. Mm -hmm.